Shalom, welcome to the Temple Institute, Michon Migdash, and we are here today in sunny Jerusalem. Despite it being the end of December, it's about 20 degrees Celsius outside. And today we're going to start a new series, and this series is called Temple Myths. And this is almost a continuation of a video that we aired a couple weeks ago, which was called Temple Rebellion. In that video, for those that didn't watch it, we suggested and encouraged people to give up the Gaulist thinking, the exile thinking, and instead to embrace Geula thinking, redemption thinking, which would lead, of course, to us building the temple today. Now, after 1967, when we liberated the Temple Mount, Harabait, we recaptured it, if you will, but really it was a liberation. It was really, we were obligated at that time to actually build the temple. Just like the Hashmonaim during Hanukkah, the Hasmoneans during Hanukkah, when they liberated the Temple Mount, immediately they started to build the temple, as we discussed. It took them eight days to clean up the temple, and they rebuilt the temple. We were meant to do the same thing, and yet we didn't. And why is that? Why is it that we didn't build the temple? And the reason is, is that for 2,000 years we were stuck in exile. And being stuck in exile then, it wasn't a good time. It wasn't like being in America today, or Canada, or Australia, or parts of Europe. It was a terrible time for the Jewish people. And for 2,000 years the Jews saw no end, no light at the end of the tunnel. And so they came up with ideas. They came up with fanciful ideas, dreams, and they made up ideas of how they were going to get extricated from the exile, from Galut. How is it going to be? How the redemption was going to look? And they created all kinds of scenarios that they saw them getting out of the Galut. And they weren't halachic scenarios. They weren't based on Chazal or sages, but they were ideas, they were dreams. Unfortunately, these dreams carried through. And even after 1967, many rabbis turned these dreams, these descriptions that people had made up about the future, and they turned them into excuses. Reasons why we can't build the temple today. So today we're going to start this series, and it's called Temple Myths. And we're going to start with one of the two more popular myths one that many rabbis accept and we're going to discuss it and break it down for you so you can understand whether or not you agree with this myth and the first one is is the temple is coming from the heavens that Hashem will build the temple and therefore we cannot build the temple today because God must build the temple and it will come from Shemaim, it will come from the heavens it will come down from the heavens and God will build it. And this excuse or myth means that we can't do anything today and we should not think about building the temple today. And we will refer to this one as myth number one. Now let's discuss this. What does it exactly mean? Now when I grew up as a child, I too learned or heard this in school that there will be a flying building coming from the heavens and it will fly down, some say with fire, some say not with fire, unclear. It will be golden, it will be beautiful, and it will rest right on the Temple Mount, and it would seem it would squash everything in its path, and then it would rest there, and it would just be ready to go. Now the problem with this is, as you can imagine, we have no details on what's going to happen here. No further details. Will this include the vessels of the Mikdash, of the temple? Will it include the garments of the Kohanim, of the priests? Will it include storage rooms? Will it include bathrooms? And when it lands, what happens? Which rabbis are going to tell us what to do? Will it be ready to go? None of these details are known. And, yet, and no one knows any of these details. And yet, interesting enough, many rabbis are, we're so ready to adopt 
this belief, this myth, yet having no source to base it on. And as a result, have dissuaded us from building the temple today. So let's describe this scenario. It's a mikdash coming from heaven. It's a flying mikdash. It's a mikdash made in heaven. It's a miracle mikdash. So I'm going to highlight three problems with this idea, aside from the fact that it may be very difficult for some of you to actually digest this idea that Hashem will one day build a temple and send it down from the heavens. There are three problems. And the first one is logic. Okay? The miracle of a temple flying from heaven is even greater than the miracle of the splitting of the sea. Okay? And the splitting of the sea appears in the Bible. But a temple flying from heaven, which in my mind is greater than the splitting of the sea, is not mentioned anywhere, nor in the Torah, not in the Torah, and nor in any of the sages, any chazal. So that's very difficult to accept because we can't just make up miracles because they're convenient. Now, the next problem is more of a problem of halacha. Because what does it mean that Hashem will build the mikdash for us, will build the temple for us? What does that mean? What that means is that we should do nothing. Right now, here as we stand in Jerusalem, in Israel, we shouldn't lift a finger. That's really what it's saying. You may not lift a finger until God sends that temple from the heavens. But as you know, this goes against our entire Torah. Our entire Torah is all about doing. On Har Sinai, when we were on Mount Sinai, we said, Naseh v'nishma. We will do and we will listen. Naseh means we will do. It's an active verb, we must do. And interesting enough, the temple, when it comes to the verse in the Torah of the temple, it says, uses the same verb, v'asu li mikdash, make me a temple. So we're all about doing. So if Hashem actually builds the temple and does this mitzvah for us, it runs counter to what the Torah told us to do. And our Kabbalah, and that which we accepted on Har Sinai, it runs counter to that as well. So it's a very difficult thing for us to accept. And also, we have 248 mitzvot aseh, 248 commandments that we must do one of them, of course, being is building the temple. Now, I'm going to actually quote to you a pasuk, a verse from Dvarim that I think captures this idea very well that it, we're incumbents, it's incumbent upon us to actually do all mitzvot. And here's a pasuk, it's in Deuteronomy, Dvarim. It's in the 29th chapter and the 28th verse. It's a very, very important pasuk, important Pasuk verse for many many reasons and I'm going to actually say it in Hebrew and then translate it to English because it's so important and here's the Pasuk Hanistorot Lashem Elokeinu those things that are hidden are to Hashem our God in other words reasons for mitzvot those we let Hashem deal with he has his reasons we don't need to know Hashem's reasons we just need to know what Hashem wants from us and here's the other part of the Pasuk. Vahniglot lanu ulevanenu adolam. Those things revealed, meaning the commandments that Hashem has commanded us, they're for us and our children forever. And here's the key part of the Pasuk. Laasot et kodivrei hatara zot. You have to do the whole Torah. We must do the entire Torah, keep the entire Torah. And of course, that mitzvah of Yasu the Mikdash, making God a temple, is one of those mitzvot that we must do. There's no precedent at all amongst the Jewish people for us transferring the mitzvot from man to God, that Hashem should do our mitzvot. There's no precedent for that. And it's unacceptable for one to actually think that way. And here we go into the third problem where I said it's unacceptable for man to think that way. Because the third problem with this is an amuna problem. When we say Hashem will build the temple, it's essentially what we're also saying is that the mitzvah of building the temple that's written in the Torah, in the Parsha of Truma, in Parsha Truma, that that mitzvah is now, here now, canceled. It's nullified. It no longer exists as a mitzvah. 
The, and the real problem with that is it goes against our principles of faith. The 13 principles of faith of the Rambam, it goes against principle number nine. And that principle, we've actually mentioned this principle on the show before, but I will repeat it. And it goes like this, and we say it every day. I believe with full faith and belief. The Torah will never change and will never receive another Torah from Hashem. By us nullifying the mitzvah of building the temple, we're essentially saying we have a new Torah. And that's unacceptable. The Torah is eternal, as we know. And interesting that the Rambam, Maimonides, saw fit to repeat this idea in his halachic book called the Mishnah Torah, both at the beginning of Mishnah Torah, also at the end. And I'll give you the key line that he says, Shekol divrei Torah mitzuvim anu lasotan adolam. The entire Torah, all the words of the Torah, we are commanded to do forever. They never change. The Torah is eternal and doesn't change. Finally, I want to bring a counter medrash that shows the exact opposite. If we don't build the Mikdash, if we don't build the temple with our own hands, Hashem is never going to rest His Shechina amongst us. Hashem will never rest His divine presence amongst the Jewish people and the world and the nations in general. And here's a medrash, and it's called Mishnat Rabbi Eliezer. And Rabbi Eliezer was one of the great Tanaim from the Tanaic period. And it's in Parsha Chaf. And I'm going to actually just give you a loose English translation of it. And the idea behind it is like this. Hashem cherishes when we do work, when we use our hands to work, to do His mitzvot. And He says, and what's the proof? Because the Jews, when they were in the desert, they had to build the tabernacle, which was the Mikdash, the temple. And it took them six months. And Hashem wanted them to build that tabernacle for six months because He loves when we do His work. And even though God could have sent us the temple, Keherafain, in the blink of an eye. Remember, there were other miracles going on in the desert. But Hashem didn't want to do a miracle. He wanted us to build that Mishkan, that tabernacle. And it was only because of Him building that we built it that He rested His Divine Presence upon us. So this Madras tells you clearly, it's only because we do the work as man that Hashem then comes back and rests His presence amongst us. Our involvement in any mitzvah is key. God's not doing mitzvahs for us. He's not going to do it for us. So therefore, God building the temple, the temple coming from the heavens, let's be honest, it's contrary to logic, it's contrary to our halachic tradition, and it's also contrary to our principles of faith, our belief in God and in the Torah. So maybe it's time to uproot this myth and instead embrace our pledge in Har Sinai when we said Nasa Venishma, we will do and then we will understand and let's build a temple today. No more excuses. Thank you very much.